Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is Victor with Sky Tech One, where we talk about tech, travel, and drone videography. So today we're going to talk about future proofing, what is future proofing, the pros and cons of future proofing, and how it applies to MacBook Pro M1 Pros and Macs. So let's get started. So what is future proofing? Well, simply put, future proofing is buying the best spec laptop or desktop you can get and hoping it will last the maximum amount of years. So what typically think, what kind of things do you typically future proof? This is the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM. Now the hard drive space, you can kind of say um, you are also future proofing, but uh, typically um, it's a little bit more flexible. So I'll share with you a couple of findings, a couple of insights. All right, what are the pros of future proofing one your computer will be as fast as possible right now and it will last a long time so this is probably seven years eight years so my last uh mac pro that i bought in 2014 lasted all the way until 2000 so that is uh you know six seven years um another pro would be it'll It'll be very powerful for the next few years and your user experience will be great for the next few years. What are the cons? It's gonna be very expensive because what you buy today at the top spec will be a lot cheaper in the next few years. So it'll last a few years, but on the tail end, you'll be missing out on new features, new technology. So maybe even in midway through, you'd be missing out on features, you know, for example, if you're buying the MacBook Pro 16, you might be missing out on AR, VR uh, features, technologies in, in the near or, 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 or later future. Uh, and throughout time, you're going to be ending up paying more. And I'll show you in a second. And what is another con? It really sucks if it gets stolen. You know, if you're bringing a $5,000 computer to uh, Maui or, or to Mexico or wherever and it gets stolen, uh, it's not going to be really good. I don't know. This is probably not a really big issue for some people, but just to throw it in there. Faster computers may come out just a year later. So next year, the Mac Pro is going to come out, maybe even the iMac. The Mac Pro, according to Max Tech, might have 40 cores. It's four times the M1 Max uh, CPU and GPU. So, you know, are you gonna skip out on that and buy it now? Let's take a look at our 20 year timeline. So these are the years going down. Uh, this is the date of purchase. Anytime you see a number is the, the, the year of the purchase. These gaps are years where you don't buy anything and uh, so let's discuss this high spec MacBook Pro 16. So this is uh, almost the the top spec MacBook Pro, and it's only the four terabyte. I know this this is a little bit more expensive, but um, I'm assuming that four terabytes is good enough. I'm just not going overboard. Uh, but as you see, every seven years, I mean, every six years, like one, two, three, four, five, six, every six years, you upgrade, right? It seems reasonable. You can probably upgrade in seven or even eight years these days. Let's just assume six years. So after 22 years, it's going to cost you almost 20 grand. And next is the MacBook Air plus a mid slash high spec iMac. And this will run you. Uh, almost 19 grand. So you're saving a little bit of money, but you get two computers. And over here, you can see why getting two computers might be more interesting. Uh, next is the mid spec MacBook Pro 16. And this is what I am, what I got. If you go with something even more basic, like the MacBook Pro 13, which with the, only the M1, then you're going to save tons of money you know almost half as much so this is kind of you know what you want right going going with something like macbook pro 13 you're 
going to be able to push it only so far. So, and I'll explain more in just a second. Um, but what did I get? I'll show you. Um, this is a, this is a graph. This is a, this is a chart of the different options you can get and who it's for, right? So on SOC, we start off with the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. Then we have the double binned M1 Pro. Uh, this is only for the 14 inch. Next we have, uh, you can just read what it is. So um, the M1 MacBook Pro, it's still a good computer, good for a lot of people, casual users, students, uh, if you're only using web and email, Zoom calls, uh, basic photography editing, basic video editing. Uh, this is not for pros. Well, <laughs> even it does say pro. I know pros do use it. I'm using that particular computer right now. And I use it for basic photo, video editing, and email and web and all that stuff. Um, but when I start editing more advanced stuff i can feel it i can i can see it so and that's why i got this one this is ex exactly what i got um but let's first talk about this the eight core four eight core cpu 14 core gpu this is the base model the cheapest macbook pro m1 pro you can get and um I think this is a great computer uh, for most people uh, doing video and photo editing because I don't think you need that much power. This is good for YouTubers. This is probably good for coders. Coders, let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, music producers, um, I don't expect music pr production to be more intense, graphically intensive than video editing. I could be wrong. Uh, so this is interesting. Uh, a fellow named Zavitz Lee, I believe, on, on YouTube, he had this laptop and he was able to edit 8K video. Like he put a couple of streams of 8K video on his timeline. You know, I'll link the video in the description below, but sometimes you might not want to trust those things because it, it is, you know, a simulated uh, test, you know, in, in real in real life, you might have much more apps open and, you know, you're, you're grading the footage, you're putting effects on the footage. So it might not be the real, the, the, the whole story. But, hey, if it can do 8K, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So I went with this model uh, with the extra uh, two cores of CPU, extra two cores of GPU, because I wanted the extra assurance and I, you know, to, to get from eight core to 10 core, I only paid like 200, I think $200. And for $200, I'm playing with the big boys in terms of, in terms of the uh, CPU. Uh, GPU, I decided if I have an extra two cores, it was only a hundred bucks. So um, might as well just do it. I didn't want to go to the max because I had to upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I chose one terabyte. Oh, and the reason I didn't uh, want to upgrade to 24 cores of GPUs because then I had to pay $400 for um, the extra 16 gigs of RAM. And according to Max Tech and a couple other, uh, at least one other source, 16 gigs is enough. In fact, uh, very competitive to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I went with 16. One terabyte, uh, right now I'm using 512 on the MacBook Pro 13 M1. Uh, I have not filled up with it, mainly because I wipe everything from my download folder and I put it on my, my external hard drive every two, three months. So I have about 100 gigabytes free. Um, so I think one terabyte will let me not have to do that maintenance so often um i think one terabyte is the sweet spot for for people like me and it is also luke miani's recommendation so then you have more this is kind of like the more future proofing kind of uh, options and um 
you know, the, the, these are for people who really need, I think if you're going to pick this, um, you're either the kind of person that would really need this right now and you need this power on the go, or you're probably just overspending. All right, let's talk about who should future-proof and who shouldn't future-proof. One, people who need a very powerful GPU. Number two, pro, gamer, pro gamers. But, I mean, shouldn't you be on a PC? Three, video editors who are editing 8K, 12K footage and adding LUTs, adding effects, slow motion, and kind of crossfading with them, with, crossfitting those clips with each other. Next, people who whose render time is critical to them. You know, people on the field who are editing on the field, who are rendering uh, like FPV, like 8K FPV footage. 8K FPV footage is not very common, um, but people who are rendering this stuff and they need to be on the field, right? People who cannot accept any slowdowns. Uh, they can't wait for Photoshop to load up. They can't wait for Premiere to load up, right? Um, sometimes even having an 10-core uh, core CPU might not help. People who don't want to upgrade every five years, you just want to set it and forget it. So who shouldn't future-proof? Casual users who are emailing or just surfing the web. Uh, typical video editors, even pros. Casual gamers using parallels or crossfire no not crossfire <laughs> people who do their research and know exactly what they need and what they don't need and pick the right choice people who could who can wait till next year and maybe get a, a desktop maybe the mac pro so with that um i like to hear which m1 max or m1 pro you got did you prove did you future proof it or did you not future proof it so let me know in the comments below uh and again if you like this video give me a like if you want to see more videos like this you want to see drone videos drone videography give me a sub and as always this is victor with sky tech one i'll see you in the next one